Hello, thank you for watching. My name is Nedu. I'm a DIY sewing enthusiast based in Lagos. This is the creative process behind my two-piece. So here's an illustration of what I want to sew. A blouse with a crescent shaped sleeve and a pencil skirt. When I first started sewing, I didn't always sketch my ideas, but I find that I've gotten better with practice. I like it because it makes the vision of what I want to achieve much clearer. So pattern making is easily my favorite bit of the process. I modified my body sloper into a dartless blouse pattern by doing the following. So firstly, I extended the underarm point by three quarters of an inch on both sides and then blended down to the hip line. I also extended the shoulder point on both sides by half an inch and then redrew the armhole curve to the new underarm points, which effectively increased the chest and the back width. Secondly, I did a bit of waist shaping to soften the boxy shape. I took in one inch from the waistline on both pieces and then redrew the side seam. Thirdly, I did the most interesting bit of the blouse, the sleeves. I created batwing sleeves and then drew a big curve over it, which gave the crescent shape. The curve measures about four inches from the widest point to the broken lines. I used my basic single dart sloper for the skirt. Because I was creating the pencil skirt, I took in the hemline by one inch on both sides. And after trimming off the one inch on both sides, the hemline becomes more tapered. So here's the final four piece pattern sets for this project. I sewed up a twirl to test the fit of the pattern. I like doing this so I can make corrections before cutting the main fabric. Well, I was happy with the fit when I wore this. It was really nice. There was just one thing I needed to fix, which was the sleeves. I didn't think it was wide enough. And so I raised the curve on the pattern by one inch. Okay, so I'm just about to cut my um, the pieces for my midi skirt. I am using this really, 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 really nice distressful leather. I've had this for a while, I just didn't know what to do with it until now, so I'm glad I'm putting it to use finally. And of course I have my patterns, yeah, my basic sloper, and um, I have this lovely silk satin. I plan to use this to line. I think it will, it will give the skirt the required, like a nice volume when I'm done. And also, it's always nice to line your garments. They do last longer that way. And it gives it a, a rather professional look, to be honest. So I'll be lining this skirt with this. I'm not very sure what to expect with this fabric, but I'm, I'm hoping for the best. That's the inside. It's a nice plain, and on the outside it's like this distress. I do not think it's, it's nice. So yeah, I'm cutting shortly. <laughs> okay, so I'm using my pattern. 
tracing out the pattern on the fabric the pattern I'm using here is not a seamed pattern that means it hasn't got sewing allowance factored into it so I'm gonna I'm using my braided ruler to just trace outwards of the pattern by about five eighths of an inch so this is my basic pattern and I think all of my basic patterns aren't seamed at all I find that when a pattern is seamed it makes it so much easier because if this pattern had been seamed all I would have done was just place the pattern on my fabric and then I would have used a rotary quarter right away to just you know cut out what I need So now I'm cutting and I'm cutting outwards of the seam allowance I left. So this is the back skirt piece. I like to leave enough zipper allowance. I think I left about two inches in this instance just in case. Okay, so because this skirt is a pencil skirt, it means that the hemline is slightly tapered. So it means that I have to cut along the hem using this method. I used I left an inch and a half of hemming allowance. So I'm gonna fold inwards by that amount first of all, and then I'm gonna pin it down before cutting. So I'll show you the effect of this shortly. So once I take out the pin at the hemline, you'd observe a slight flare by the side, right there. These are the back pieces. And here's the front piece. I simply use the full leather pieces as a template to cut out the lining pieces. Okay, so for the blouse, the top, I am using this beautifully colored fabric. It was called Fintex when I bought it. That's what the storekeeper told me. If I had to describe the texture, I would say it reminds me of both sides look like the matte side of crepe back satin. But the odd thing is that it hasn't got the same weave as satin fabric. Either way, it's really beautiful. I like it because it has the right amount of loft required to give um, the crescent sleeves the structure I desire. I hope it works out. So here are my patterns. I have the back piece. You can see how the nice, <laughs> the nice curve there, and um, the front pattern as well. So these are in my actual size. So just right after I made the muslin, I realized that the sleeve wasn't as um, wide as I wanted it to be, and so I adjusted it accordingly. You can see my trial and error markings there. So I'm keen to see how this goes. I think it, it, it'll be a really super thing to sew because there are very not very many number of seams on it. You know, it's just one along the shoulder, down to the sleeves, the sleeves, the underarm and the side, and that's about it. It's really simple. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> My blouse pattern is a seamed pattern, which means it has sewing allowance factored into it. So it's so much easier to slice out the garment pieces using a rotary cutter.
I started the stitching process with the blouse. Guys, pressing is super important too. <laughs> Afterwards, I did the sketch shell and lining. I eventually opted for a bandless skirt, so I'm attaching the shell fabric to the lining at the top. I finished the sleeve hem with bias tape cut from the blouse fabric. I then hand stitched on the inside so that it's clean and discreet. Facing was used to finish the neckline. This is easily my favorite bit about this top. 